704. The first thing on the agenda is reserve fund transfers, of which I have two. I thought the fire chief was coming for one of them. So we'll just give him a second and we'll deal with the guy. Oh, oh well, that explains that. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I didn't even go down there coming. Yeah. Oh, that's what it is? Oh, that's just okay. canon. Mike will be back. All right. Yeah. All right. We had some technical delays, so sorry for that. So, so seeing we have a call on a quorum, I'm going to call the meeting in order at 704. We're the having first the thing on the back. agenda is reserve transfers, like of which I have two. It's the fire. I thought the fire chief was coming for one of them. So we'll just give him a second and we'll deal with the guy. Oh, well, that explains that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess. Where's Mike? He went right here. To another meeting. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I didn't even go down there. Come on. Hey Barbara, we're getting feedback like 10 seconds, 20 seconds delayed. But I can't hear you and you don't have the screen down? Well, I mean, all you see is the thing on either. Yeah. Oh, this is a disaster. It's the first meeting of the year we actually have people. <laughs> Um, all right, let's try this. Can you hear us now? No. Well, we can hear you. Oh, we can hear you. At least we're not getting that. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? What do you got? I watched the board of select my mini the other night and when they were speaking. It was cutting in and out. I, yeah, so is that is that button on under the table? Hey, Lisa, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. All right, I'm going to leave and try coming back in. I'm sorry. You're here. Oh, but I can't hear you. I can hear you, though, on the speakers in the room. Yeah, but if I can't hear the meeting, that's a problem. All right, hold on. Better, better that than I show up at 7.30 for a meeting and then at 20 minutes early. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's what Butch just told the room. Okay. Well, then we'll just save it. Oh, you just restarted? Okay. Yeah, like 30 seconds. Oh, that's interesting. It is always yeah. the people response to everything. I'm going to go on public access and see if we're on. Oh, yeah. Is it plugged in? Turn it off, turn it back on. Yeah. That's the first thing. Did you, did you reboot it? We just turned it off. Yeah, we just turned it back on. It just like so did you get that, Barbara? Did you just turn it I was aware of that. You should be able to hear us right now. Yeah. 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 Last year, I guess. I don't know why anybody in that in, in, with another profession would put themselves through that torture. But good for him. Well, he told me he's got two masters. He can hear you. And I think two bachelors. All right, I'll do it. Can you hear me that way? Lectures and taking okay, things. we are booted up. Yeah. Well, then if you enjoy well, the art of learning. As long as you can hear us, that's part thing, of it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. It's admirable, really. Yeah. Yeah. There was one firefighter in my law school class All right. from Worcester. I think we're back in one piece now. We don't have a camera, yeah, he said, so when everyone, anyone wants to watch uh, it, you just see a black screen. Just, <laughs> nothing else to do. <laughs> Divorced, yeah, like that. worked so, those 24 hour shifts. Yeah. You know, you want to run for 24 yeah. right. hours, right. and then yeah, so he thought he would do it for fun. I thought I heard feedback again. All right, so back to where we were. So the first reserve fund transfer we'll deal with is the $15,000 going into gasoline. And I know I sent an email telling you all what the reserve fund balance was. Mm -hmm. yeah, you did. And I just need to dig it out. This is part of the prep when I don't have. Uh, oh, I have it right here. Hold on. It is the number 139. Sound familiar? This is $15,000 for gas. 
Right. But I, I was just wanted to give everyone what the, what the current balance is, and of course I can't find it. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, yeah, Barbara, saw, it was in this right right here. Here. like hundred million Balance in yes. prior is 119,560. Great, thank you. In stereo. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Well, we all know what's causing this, so. Yeah. Do I have a motion to approve the transfer of $15,000 from the reserve fund to the gasoline account, 1915254800? Larry and Jim. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Yes. Seven, seven and nothing. All right, so today's the 12th. All right, so since the fire chief isn't here, but Barbara said he was, gonna try to make it we will save his reserve fund transfer to see if he makes it till later on in the meeting so the next thing on the agenda is the line item budget which is all set and then we would move into the annual town meeting for which I thought there were a couple Kevin? of line items where in the budget where the dollar amounts were ch all changing the right. that's right yeah now you say that oh that's right yeah, you did send that along. That was earlier in the week. Anyone have the numbers in front of them? Looking Look. right now, but I don't see. So the, the salary of the town administrator needs to go to 175. That number I remember, but it was the there's a car yes, balance a, and something. Car like 350 a month for the car. It's you need to increase by 4200 which one is that though barbara what other one? other charges other charges okay all right so let's do this the right way um so i would need a motion to reconsider the uh, the way we do this now it's one whole thing the personnel costs of the town administrator so moved second so, wait a second. We, we vote the bottom line. So, right. we don't right. have to, we can just. We, we, we have to recalculate the bottom line. You know what? I have that somewhere. Where's the town Let me just open it up. Yeah, I have the. Here's the budget worksheet. You have the budget worksheet, Mike? So, okay. He's looking for this total, right? Um, yes. Bum, 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 bum. And then it's, the other charges. It's this number, right. 170. The other charges, becomes yet 10,700. Wasn't it 277, 422? That's what it was. It's now going to be 281, it's be 622. 286, 622. 286? So this number Wait, is going to go from yeah, 170 that? to 175, right? Right, and the other one goes from oh, plus nine, right? 6,500 to 10,700. The other, other charges, it's it was 6,500. Was the 42? Add 4,200 to that. 4,200, which and makes it 10 cents. 281, 622. That's what I get, but she just said 286, 622. Five thousand. Yep. And forty-two hundred. That's nine something. And it was right. So this this formula is wrong somehow. This formula. It equals E nineteen. <coughs> right. right. Equals. Oh, I see what she's doing. Yeah, the formula is wrong because it copies it. It doesn't do the summary. I see what it's doing wrong. So that's 21 to 24, and this is just E9. So the new, now I fixed it. Now it works out. So G, the, in, in G for personnel cost, the new total is 248,772. We've got to change that. So, so the new total expenses is 37,850. 
Which 286, 622? 248772. Yep. You're looking for the whole bottom line? Yeah. 286, 622. Yeah. Well, and then Kevin? 622. Yeah. Go ahead, Barbara. You, you're going to want to also change. So if for your book, you're going to want to also change the selectmen's numbers to those same numbers because they also voted those amounts. Right. I got, so that I got to change the formula everywhere. Okay. If you no, so if you just change the number under the first column, it'll format for all the others. Okay, I see that now. All right. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Sorry. That's okay. All right, so now we're good. Everything lines up. So what does that do with thousand dollar margin that we have? Do we have an offsetting amount for the reserve transfer to pay for that? You get that, Barbara? What's that? So the question was, you know, we had a, we were within three thousand three hundred and twenty-five dollars of the levy limit. So now that yeah. we're adding nine thousand dollars to it, how are we paying for it? Um, so whoever asked that question, no, I didn't hear. They mustn't have talked into the mic. Um, so the numbers are in um, numbers are changing, and as the budget's going through the state level, there's various at this point in time the the state numbers are are increasing slightly. So if the Senate numbers go through at the state level, and then it's the compromise budget, and then what's voted. But right now, with the Senate budget recommendations, we're about eighty thousand dollars to the good. Um, but if not, then we'll have to. Just adjust one of our revenue numbers upwards slightly or uh, we're still waiting for the actual new growth figure which could be greater than the two hundred thousand dollars that i estimated so there's a lot of moving parts to the budget still but so, we'll we'll have a balanced budget so it sounds like when we came up with the three thousand dollar we're on on the edge that that's not just all the raise and appropriate funds it's all the other funds and revenues that gave us a pot of money right right yeah. if, if we go back and look at some of those revenue sources and increase one by nine thousand dollars because we have a better number now we stay in balance right <laughs> right yep okay so i'm going to ask the two of you to recon or adjust your motion to do the town administrator as a total you good with that yes all right so now we're back to this town administrator as a total so the new number we would need to move for the town administrator total is 286,622 so unclear do we have a motion to reconsider the line I'm gonna let the vote on that oh, motion. Actually, then once we, we vote yes. on that and, and agree we are going to reconsider it there's another motion yep yeah yep. you're right no that's still Larry and, and Jim Town admin. All right. So all we're doing is voting on the reconsideration and basically zeroing it out. All those in favor? That's seven and nothing. All right, so now we're at zero. Thank you, Mike, for the getting that right. So two, what did I tell you? Then the new number is 286622. Larry? Jim? Okay. Two eighty six. All right, any further <coughs> questions or comments? <coughs> okay. Yep. All those in favor? Seven to nothing. Good. So now that gets us through the line item budget. All right. So now we're moving to the annual town meeting warrant. Where is the folder, Kevin? All right, so the pull in the shade, it's going to knock down the noise. Oh, you're knocking down the sun. All right. <laughs> so the annual, the file we're going to be using for tonight's meeting is the one titled "Annual Town Meeting ATM Warrant Articles FY23 Dash Final Dash Corrected," because the final weren't corrected. So we're, we're, that's the file we're going to end up using. Okay, 
So let's take care of our guests first. So, Butch, I know you have a couple articles on here at the bottom that got added. Um, just, uh, I, I don't know if you know this, but I'm going to ask Barbara this question. So for Articles 37 and Article 38 that Butch is here for, there is no sponsor. Is it, is it going to be the DPW director? Uh, it, would, it would probably be. It's water, water related. Okay. We can do that. Not, not to be picky, but do we, uh, is it the director as the individual in a role, in the, or is it the, the department, Department of Public Works? It could be anybody. Let's just make it, why don't you just put board of selectmen? Acting sewer that. commissioners, that type of thing? Yep. Mm -hmm. well, well, just board of selectmen is fine. Uh, I'm missing something. You got something, Mike? Mm. Okay, so I know what, what's here. Hmm? Okay, yeah. No, there's a bunch of C's you don't need there. Oh, yeah, I see it right before the four. We get rid of the parentheses. Okay. Mm. All right, so the first one is remove and replace plant media at water plant. 481,000. And the motion is a borrowing motion, so that's why the language, when we, whoever makes the motion, needs to read it exactly as it's written there. So fill us in. What are we doing yes, with this? Yes, this article? is um, we have an iron removal plant over uh, behind the over the village entrance over there, and there's uh, three large filters. And every roughly every ten years, we have to do this. We did it in 2012. We take out the media inspect the tanks replace the media if there's no damage to the tanks inside the cost will be around two hundred and eighty nine thousand um, we we don't anticipate damage but the last time we did it we had some things we had to replace some valves and pipes and so we're estimating uh, worst case scenario four hundred eighty one thousand so we're asking for that money we may not use it all but if we if we do take those things apart and uh, find something wrong with them we can't put them back together and until we fix the problems. So that's what that's for. Okay, any questions? I, I, I realize it's a large expenditure, uh, but Barbara, do we normally use borrowing for operational maintenance expenses versus capital expenses? So this is an actual piece of equipment, so it is allowable. So what I'm, what I'm looking to do here is it'll be a five-year uh, loan. And then, as Butch said, depending once they get in there, you know, the cost might not be as high. So depending on, you know, if it's the full 481, it would be five years to pay it back. Um, if it's, you know, a, an a large, you know, a lot less money, then we'll look at how many years we need to pay back to be. We're just trying not to make such a large impact on the water rate all in one year. Because it will be paid back in, in additional fees to water system users, right? You through the fee, yeah, through the, through the water rate. Okay. Any other additional questions for Butch or Indo or Barbara related to this? So can I get a motion then? Well, you need to read that. You need to read that. That's the, that's the legal motion. Okay. <clears throat> I would move that the town appropriate $481,000 to pay costs of removing, inspecting, and replacing iron removal plant media including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto <laughs> related thereto and to meet this appropriation the town treasurer with the approval of the board of selectmen is authorized to borrow set amount under and pursuant to glc 44 section 8 7a 
or any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. So just for everyone's edification, I had to make a couple of changes there. All I did is like, like we do in most of the articles, I put the written words 481,000 in the motion, put the numbers in a parentheses, and then I added the word dollars because dollars is missing from the actual task of the, art mm -hmm. the article. So that our motion will have the word dollars and then 481,000 in 00100 written out. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Seven to nothing. Okay. Kevin, what was the vote? I couldn't Seven hear. Seven to nothing. Thank you. All right, moving on to Article 38, Sewer Department Generator. Yes, we have a, our main pump station is the Route 20 pump station across from the entrance to Old Stewart Village, right by the uh, jug handle. Um, with the generator there is a 1953 generator. I think it was original equipment. It is running uh, quite well, actually, for an engine that old, but uh, we think it's time before it does fail. If it, if it does fail, um, that pump station, if it were to overflow, it's going to go right in the river right next door to the pump station and actually flow right by the water station, by the, by the wells. So we're a little concerned. I'm, so we're putting in for the money to try and get that replaced. The good thing is we actually have a line on a really good grant, but we don't know the timing of the grant, so we'd like to go ahead. And also we, we are under the understanding that it, in pursuing this, we more likely to get a grant. You sit back and just don't do anything and wait for a grant. They're more likely to give you a grant if you're in the process of doing the project. Because we just got Maple Street after we funded it, and then we got federal money for it. So we're kind of hoping that same thing happens here. But if we don't get the grant, we still need to replace the generator. Any questions? Is is this a diesel unit, Butch? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the new one. The, the one inside, we can't remove it. it. There's no access to get it out of the building even to, to re, that's something we'll have to pay for ourselves. But we're going to put an outdoor one, um, which will be an automatic generator and be up out of, the, out of the way of the water. And we should be in a much better situation at that point. All right. So I have a question here. So, uh, Barbara, I guess this is more for you because this is going through borrowing again. How come this isn't something that can be covered with the opera funds or are the opera funds all gone? Um, they pretty much exhausted the first half of the ARPA funds. Oh. And I, we, won't, we won't get any more money probably until September of next year. Okay. And this is the same concept that this will be repaid back over five years through the increase in sewer fees? Yes, and as Butch said, he's going, well, it won't be, who must, we are going to apply for a grant, so we're going to wait to see if we receive the grant before we move forward with this project and incur the expense of, right. of borrowing the funds. So at least I just know that Mike needs to step away at 729. All right, and the only other things to know is I did the same thing here. I put the $220,000 in actual English language and not numbers, and I added the word dollars, and then put the actual numerical figure inside of parentheses. And I also moved the second appropriates. And do you have to put point zero zero? I did, yes, yeah, dot okay. zero zero. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so do I have a motion for Article 38? I'll make the motion. You need to read that okay. again. I'll make the motion that the town appropriate, appropriates $220,000 to pay costs of replacing a sewer department generator, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the town treasurer with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to general laws 
uh, C44, Section 7, parentheses 1, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore. Okay, we have a second? Second. All right, I'll take Kathy on that one since she was louder. <laughs> um, <laughs> any other comments? Okay, all those in favor? Six to nothing. Did you get that one, Barbara? Yes, six. Six, Zero. yeah. Okay, I don't think there's anything else you. See you later. Great. Thank you. Fine. Thank you. Okay, so the next one to go back to is um, Article 34, transfer of land on Cedar Street. I know we've already acted on this, but we're, you know, the Open Space Committee asked to come in and be heard, so Carol, come on. Um, I, Carol Goodwin, I was here. Um, I, I, I knew you had acted on it, but, um, I called the town administrator, and he saw me, said to me that you hadn't officially acted on it because he hadn't written up all the articles as they were going to be presented. Oh, we officially took a vote on this. Did, is no, that I didn't. I, that's what he, I mean, he didn't think, I, I, so that's why I came in. I didn't know whether I should or not, but I wanted you to know I cared about it. That's all. <laughs> because so just for your knowledge, our vote, six to zero to one, was to take no action on this article. Yeah, I understood okay. that, yes. I. Um, I've heard about it. <laughs> okay. 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 So, um, 70 Cedar Street, um, we are looking to transfer this property, it's 14 acres, to the Conservation Commission. Um, what happened, um, the residents, a group of residents in, uh, from that area came to our open space meeting with concerns last fall. And you know how this property, I mean, you've seen it because you've worked on the many articles that's come, come before you for the development of this property. And they have been very concerned. And all these articles have, have been defeated at town meeting. And, you know, last spring, I think they thought it was over with because they defeated it again. And then it came back in October. So they were fairly frustrated. And so um, she, they asked us to walk it with them, which I don't know if any of you have walked it. but. It's um, an amazing space. It's hilly with huge trees, and it has um, a huge, well, a large wetland on it that feeds a, with a stream directly into Cedar Lake. So this it would help the silting problem in Cedar Lake too. And so when we saw that, we're like, I can't imagine flattening it. I can't imagine what would, you know, it had an impact on us. We couldn't imagine what would. Um, the impact on Cedar Lake be in, 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 in long term. And so um, in one of the open space, I mean, we do have this whole report, one of our goals is to protect water resources and provide um, recreation, passive recreation particularly, and keep, you know, natural and natural um, environment to the residents of neighborhoods. Now, as you know, the, these neighborhoods are densely developed. They're, uh, all built up because they were all cottages and then they rebuild them to be year-round houses in many cases and they're large homes on small lots and so we um, I've been on the open space committee since it was farm <laughs> and you remember Larry <laughs> and uh, I, um, I wanted with Dan Zumas and one of the, I remember sitting in the back room saying one of the goals were to keep like pocket parks or recreation areas in neighborhoods you know, so that, and then maybe eventually make them interconnected. He had a, Dan had a big vision. And um, so we had discussed that. And, and that has been one of the goals throughout all these years. Um, to see permanently preserved property. And this, the history of this property is interesting because I just found this out recently. I was talking to my husband about conservation and he said that Robert Moss, they worked on the, Robert Moss built the preserve the sanctuary, the highlands, and this preserve sanctuary, highlands, and I think that's it, and, and the homes on Karen Road. So when he bought, he owned that property. And when he built the homes on Karen Road, I'm sure he said to people, I'm giving this to the town for conservation. Because that's what my husband told me. And so he did, he, we voted on a town meeting in 2001, but it wasn't for conservation because, because the powers that be wanted it under 
the general government. So um, anyway, um, like I said, densely developed neighborhood, very densely developed, and with a water resource. And then like last year, we did the same thing to Pierce Kill because if you look at a map, and there's maps in these books where you see the subdivisions. If you look at a map with all the subdivisions of a home on it, of, of the properties in our town, some neighborhoods are just packed in. You put, you, you know, when you put sewer and water, you can develop every lot. And then for people who live down Walker Pond, they do have like the water resource, uh, you know, and some open space available. So people really like it. In um, 2020, 77,000 people used our trails. 70, that with, with the counters. Those are the trails with the counters. That doesn't include Westfield, um, Well State Park, um, the preserve, Opacum's land there. You know, all those places I don't think have, and also all the, you know, the back roads. So it really helped during COVID. I can't tell you how many people came up to me and said, thank you, thank you, thank you for the trail system. It kept me sane when we couldn't leave our homes. And so I think it's really, a great thing Sturbridge has done. I, you know, we were lucky enough to have community preservation funds through all these years, and that's why we were able to acquire a lot of the property. But I think it has really become uh, a, a tourist draw, which is something I always wish for. It's an economic bonus, and it makes this a better place to live for everyone. And so if you look at the, this, this property, their paths were used. They were, you know, and really, I don't, like I said, I encourage you before you vote against, I mean, I know you voted against it, but you know, we're gonna bring a substitute motion anyway. So I encourage you to take a walk through there. And the front property is under recreation already. They have care and custody of it. So we went to the recreation committee before we went to the selectmen, just out of courtesy to see if they had any plans for this, you know, the, the, the two properties. And they didn't at that point in time. You know, and I wanted to, you know, I didn't want to step on their toes. I you know, wanted to be respectful. So, um, anyway, this is how it came about. Um, and also, I think it will enhance the recreation area that is existing. It will give them a natural place that the kids can take walks. It's, it's like, there's a big wetland there. And, you know, that's really, kids love that stuff, you know. And so they could do nature walks in there. It's 14 acres, and it abuts Karen Road. There's access from Cedar Street, and there's access from the rec committee, I mean, the rec center. And um, I know the people care passionately about it. They really do. I mean, they show up at all the town meetings and, you know, express their concerns. And so I think that's about it. Like I said, this has always been one of our goals on, on open space. We're just following, f flu f <laughs> with following through with our action items. You know, we all, there's a seven year plan. With something I'm looking at, you know, I'm wait for, I'm, actually I've been waiting for neighborhoods to come to us because we did pretty much the connective trails in the community, you know, with, with Grand Trunk, you know, um, well, um, Westville, you know, all that property. Now we're trying to connect the property on Fisk Hill to the Common, you know, we're trying to get things connected. And um, so I would encourage you, it won't cost the town a cent, and I think it's really a positive for that neighborhood. And you know, these people pay very high taxes, and I think they deserve the consideration too. Lakefront is, you know, expensive. And I think, um, truthfully, if you think of a financial point of view, I think you have to consider what the people in the community and these neighborhoods want. Sometimes I know everything becomes about, um, I think sometimes individual neighborhoods have to be considered a little bit more personally, because I said, this is where we live. This is the whole gig, you know? And particularly in COVID times, so many people work from the home and you know, they want a quick skip and a hop outside their home to just get some fresh air. This is easy. And it also, people from, you know, um, Cricket area will have access. Woodside Circle, Westwood. There's a lot of houses around there that would have access to this. So I think, I would hope you would reconsider and put it on the warrant or, you know, because I do, I think we all deserve this. Just, okay, <laughs> that's my, if you have questions. Yeah, I do, but any other, any questions, comments? Okay, so you mentioned trails. Yes. There are no town constructed trails in that No, property. no, these are the trails that people have been using for years. 
Right. You so should go no, over there. So there's no town tr no. trails officially. No. So if trails are the main focus, why not transfer it to the trail committee? Because they, are, they don't hold, hold land. Doesn't mean they can't. Yeah, but this, this has conservation restrictions and that type of thing, Kevin. This is how it's, all the properties are under the, either the care and custody of the selectmen or, or the Conservation Commission. It, it's actually, um, that's one of the rights of the Conservation you Commission. You just mentioned that one of the earlier property, which I would imagine is 60, is under the care and conservation of the Recreation Committee. I know, but that's because they have the rec. It's a different thing. Trails don't own any land. They're just, um, they just, you know, work on the town land. Okay. And they, like, they've made trails in the school property. And, and, and it's written in the, the I think, um, the wetland protection law that conservation has care and custody of conservation land. I'm pretty sure it's in that complex wetlands protection law. You can check it out. But, I mean, I, I, I know it's one of the... You know, uh, what they do. Okay. Yeah. So every project that's come down there, even the, the, the last one that was proposed, involved using a small section of 70. Not the whole property, but it needed a small section mm -hmm. of 70. If we put this in the Conservation Commission, the town will never be able to use that for a small part of anything. But I walked, I, watched, and, I walked 62. And that's, I mean, it's it's hilly. We're talking. I, you have you been over there? Have you walked the property? I've I've not walked it, but I know the. Please, I've uh, seen yeah, it. I know. But you, I spent 20 years at the rec center take, with my kids, sitting on that beach. So fortunate, right, to be able to have that and have them learn swimming and ten tennis and everything. I couldn't believe it existed way back when when I was young. And I never. I thought it was a. Totally, until I walked it, I thought it was just more of a flat piece of land with, you know, just kind of barren. I really, that's how I envisioned I was never even worried because I thought we weren't losing anything. There's a big wetland. It's all, right, you can see the sandbank is right there. That's all hills and tr hilly terrain. I, I encourage you to take a walk there. I mean, I know you, you don't, you won't change your vote um, if you, after you walk it because it's done. But I, I, I would encourage you to do it, and all of you. It's something. It's something great for the neighbor. And like I said, you know, this COVID is going to be with us. Don't, don't kid yourself. Every, you know, I went to the flea market. So many people still had masks on. They're concerned. And the, and the, so. Any other questions? I'm, Oh. Any other comments? I, I, the thing that concerns me is that it does limit the town's ability to use it for any purposes in, going on in the future. So what happens if one of our wells were to get contaminated and we need a new well site? One close to a lake might not be a bad idea. So I don't know. I, I mean, that, you know, I don't know. That, that's geological. I don't know. But I do believe that um, I, I, I truly believe that because that neighborhood already has the rec area and has traffic, you know, um, they did try and put a skate park in there. I guess I don't even know what happened to that, but it's not there anymore. Well, yeah, kind yeah. of fell into disrepair and no one ended up using it after a while. Yeah, but there's a parcel there where it was that that could be a basketball court. I don't, I think, truthfully, if you want to know my honest opinion, I think ball fields and things really shouldn't be, um, I think they should have, again, the consideration of a neighborhood. I mean, they have the school fields. You know, when you have the school, you know, when it's there already and you, and you live there, that's one thing. But I'm sure the people that moved there were told by the builder, this is all, cons I'm sure they were, because you know how we all is that. This is going to be conservation land, because that was his intent. He gave 14 acres of land to the town. You can shrug, but it's totally true, Kevin. Yeah, but I, we you, don't, know. you don't know that. I mean, I can understand that well, that I know, may have I know been he said, told Hong Kong but... that, probably, you know. So, well, anyway, it's just I wanted to give you uh, some additional information. And I do think the residents of the area, you know, they do have the rec there. They have a lot of activity in their backyard between the school and the rec. I think, and like I said, I was one of the parents sitting down there for 20 years because <laughs> of the six kids, but, you know. Um, 
It was wonderful and very fun. And like I said, I we bought, we supported every field. I never supported this field, but I supported every other field in this town that was like at the town barn. I mean, that doesn't infringe on a neighborhood. It might infringe. But there's 38 acres down there. There's you know there's other sites um, that we could consider. I just, I, I, you know, this, this is anywhere with water. Water will always take a priority. You know that. I mean, you know, if we, we have to watch, take care of our water. So, I mean, it, I can't argue that point because I'm not a geologist. Yeah, I know, but I'm also thinking, I mean, over the years, you know, you just said there are other areas. I mean, we've, as a town, considered lots of other areas. We always end up back here for additional fields because all the other areas aren't conducive to making fields well, either. Well, either is this. This would really infringe upon well, the- We had we had a shovel-ready plan to build at this we site. We had a shovel-ready plan down. We spent probably $125,000 on it, the town bond, too. It's ready to well, go. Well, that was the one that was split on both sides of 84. That was a whole- No, no, no. Yeah, but this, we also had three fields down at the town bond. I sat at that town meeting, Kevin. I saw it, you know, so anyway. That's my, those are my comments, and I just wanted you to hear why we did it. Okay. Okay? Uh, uh, Kevin. Yeah, thank yeah, you, uh, Carol, uh, yeah. I wonder if you have any thoughts about the significance or the value of the natural habitat, uh, the um, sometimes called the web of life, where the birds eat the ants and the worms and so forth. Uh, which can at times sound trivial until uh, the pavement named after the 19th century inventor named Mac Adam, McAdam, uh, is uh, pretty hard to plow and furrow. So do you have any thoughts about the role of the natural habitat in the life of the community? Well, obviously, when you have wetlands that connect with a stream to Cedar Lake to a larger body of water, there's an incredible impact because, like you said, there's a, a whole um, series of, 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 of amphibians, and all, you know, vernal pools, all that, that feed other things, feed on it and everything. And I, I don't think, I mean, I have, you know, obviously, I'm pretty much a naturalist. I really care. I care about cutting the trees. I mean, you know, that's a carbon dioxide resource. And you know, every tree we cut, and we cut plenty, you know, we have a lot of trees. Stribbage is beautiful. We have so, we're so blessed with trees and the water to, you know, maintain them. But, um, you know, they're still, they're a resource that we have two major highways, and it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. You can't even consume what they're going to be spewing out there between Amazon and that other warehouse they're building. So I'm very concerned about the environment, and I think we have to, you know, I think every, I mean, I haven't got a paved driveway, so <laughs> that's how I feel about tasks, or that's so I do. I mean, I am considerate. I, I care about it a lot, and, um, but that's why I'm on open space. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, do we have a motion for reconsideration? <laughs> okay. Uh, I move uh, reconsideration. Wait, hang on a second. Oh, Do I have on. a second? I have to abstain, so. Yeah. Yeah. Second. So Larry's motion will die. Can I kick you? For lack of a second. <laughs> So just for the minutes, just make sure you note that Mike came back to the meeting at 746. Okay. I have 45. I have been, great. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming, though. No, I just wanted you to hear. Yeah, I had a question for you about the box. It goes with that article. Okay. You can take it up. Kevin? Yes. I yes. just want you guys to note that there's slight changes in the wording to this article uh, once it was reviewed by council doesn't change the intent of the article, but it is different than what you originally saw. Is it the one that we see in their final corrected version? Yeah, it is. But I'm just letting you know that because you voted on this and the wording is different than what you voted on. Same intent, but he added um, 
I believe like for general municipal purposes was added and then to dedicate land forever under the protection of article 97 of the amendments to the Massachusetts constitution that was not in the original article the when you voted it last time. The same, yeah. But it, it, the intent is exactly the same, but I just wanted you to know. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question about No, if it doesn't change the meaning, it's right. So Chief Grasso, I see you've managed to make it. So we'll take up your reserve fund transfer right now that, you, that you're here. My apologies no, for we, being late. We were filled in that you were busy at the time. Yes. Third one in three days. Wow. At the same location? No, just careless. Disposal of smoking products. Oh, I saw one at, at the Walmart Plaza on Monday. Yeah. Smoking up. Yeah. And everybody's safe. Yes. Okay, so we have in front of us a reserve fund transfer for a thirty thousand dollar shortfall in the purchase of services for the fire department, covering a, a bunch of different topics: apparatus, apparatus maintenance, ambulance maintenance, radio repairs, advertising, and training. The, you want to give us a little background on what happened that we were just short 30 grand? Sure. The, um, the, the overages in the um, training and advertising line were attributed to the deputy fire chief's position being created and having to be re-advertised. Um, in addition to the advertising, the training line was used to pay for two assessment centers, which were unexpected at the time of budget last year at the cost of $6,500 apiece. Apparatus maintenance is always an unknown for us. We, I try to budget for the preventative stuff that I can predict, but repairs are just, we have an aging fleet, even with newer vehicles, there's still costs that are involved and we just ended up running short. And I would imagine the cost of some of the parts and replacement stuff is the, mar marked up two, three times of what it was a year ago. Yeah, the labor and the parts have just skyrocketed. I mean, it's, it's no different than any of the other economic factors in the world today. Um, the, the other item that um, really kind of caught us by surprise was the service and inspection of our, our rescue equipment, our jaws of life. Uh, the, the cost of the labor increased phenomenally uh, within the last six to eight months, just because, again, of all of the economic factors that are around. Don't we have relatively new jaws of life, though? I thought we went to one models that one person could use. We have a little bit of both, and even with those, we still have them inspected every year, and that's where the cost lies. Uh, Chief, I, uh, I happen to think that you're doing exactly what one would hope for, namely, Plan your work and work your plan. And that's what I think we are looking at. Okay. So, Larry, do I take your enthusiasm as a motion to approve the transfer of thirty thousand dollars from the reserve fund? You, sir, are a mind reader. Okay. Second. All right. So I get Larry and Kathy, but I need to write my notes. Any further questions or comments for the chief? All those in favor? Seven to nothing. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much for taking the time to come chief. in this wing. Yes, Barbara. So sorry. Before he leaves, so I'm going to ask if you could jump to the library H HVAC article because the chief may be able to help with that discussion, and then that way he doesn't have to stay for the whole meeting. Okay. I'm trying to, do you want to just shout out, you know, which one is the HVAC article? It's one of the new ones, right? Um, it's at the end. It will be. I'm looking. 36. 36? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 36. So is this the 1.1 million also include the sprinkling option? So I had a meeting today with the architect and the engineer. And based on the plans that they presented to me today, uh, we don't feel that sprinklers are going to be needed. However, comma, the architects and the engineer can't guarantee me 
what they will find when they begin doing the work. So I'm recommending, and I recommended to Barbara to leave the uh, 1.1 in, and certainly if we don't need it, it will, the extra will be returned to free cash. So just to clarify, the, the building is sprinklered now? It is not. It's not. There was a question of whether or not the repairs that are proposed, or that being the, re would the HVAC, would trigger the need to have sprinklers installed in the building. And based on the current plan, I don't believe that's the case. However, again, we're unsure with what they're actually going to find when they begin opening up and, and doing the work. Uh, and, and we felt it would be prudent to just budget for the worst and hope for the best. So, Why wouldn't it be in the best interest of the community to, even if it's not, sprinklers aren't needed, to actually include them anyways? That's a question That's for someone else, not for me. Um, this, this came into play because there's a mass general law that says um, when you do a certain amount of work, when your scope of work exceeds a certain amount, it triggers the need to upgrade the building to sprinklers. We did, I determined based on a number of meetings over the last three months that that didn't happen. The, the question of whether or not the sprinkler is at a higher pay grade than, than mine. Okay. So I would, I, just based on your attendance at these meetings, because it's probably not your expertise, but do you have an idea what the dollar difference is if 1.1 includes sprinklers without the sprinklers, what it would become roughly? Bob, do you have that number have, in front of you? Yeah, so I have, so I have the breakdown of the project. So we're looking at about $230,000 for the sprinkler and then Design fees in this article are about a hundred thousand dollars, and there's also ADA improvements that are going to be triggered by the cost of this project, and that's about a hundred thousand dollars. So I think to answer your question, it's so, so if I subtract those from the one point one, I get the cost for the HVA system. HVA yes. system, right? Okay. Correct. Well, the ADA would need to be done anyways, right? So really, you just the design fee and the sprinkler fee, what would need to come out? The ADA is also in that $1.1 million. Right, okay. Yeah, the, the cost of the HVAC triggers the ADA. Yeah, you, you can't get around that one. So that's not triggered by the possibility of sprinklers. It's just the HVAC. Correct. Okay, so we'd have to do that. Yes. And the design has to be done regardless as well. The design, Barbara, is the design fee was for the sprinklers or for the whole project? That was the, that was the whole project according to. So Kevin's original question. Um, you know what, that's a good question. Right. I'm, I'm assuming the whole project, even if we needed to have sprinklers. I, I thought that as well, but I don't have it in front of me, but I thought that as well. The cost of the sprinklers was 230, I think is what you said. So just one. The, the, the cost of the sprinklers is definitely two thirty. I I got that number from Robin today, and I and she also gave me the design fees as a hundred. So that's not design I mean, fees specific to the sprinklers. That's design fees overall. I think so. It seems like overall. a lot of money. So I right. would say that's overall. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's overall. overall. Yeah. So just one weird question: When it comes to sprinkling a building like that, since all the material is pretty much paper. Do you use water or do you use some type of chemical suppression system? Water. Oh. Mm -hmm. huh. Interesting. Is that typical for libraries? Because you think you'd destroy everything in it if there was a fire. Yeah, but that's what's, I mean, for that type of a combustible, that's what we would use is water. Okay. Well, Larry? Uh, I understand the need to wait until it's open to see what's what. I think it must be 30 years or so ago when the addition, the expansion was uh, made to the library, and I think there was some overall renovation, some of it cosmetic. I'm just curious if the, the working documents, plans from that project will help uh, in when you open up, you kind of know what you're supposed to be looking for, and that may serve as pre-education so to speak. That's if those plans are in hand. I, I don't know, are they? Do you know? I believe the engineer had a set of plans from 1987. Yeah. Uh, 
but I also believe they haven't delved into it that deeply yet um, to, to get to that detail. Um, currently, all they were looking to do was design the new HVAC system conceptually on paper. Um, so I think there's more investigatory work that they will be doing before they submit final plans to the building department, um, and that's when we'll have probably more, yeah. more answers. I would imagine code differences, uh, materials, just the, the actual substance of the materials themselves well, through technological advances research are different now from then. And, Right. You know, the characteristics for how they behave under certain circumstances and so forth, I should think. Right. Yeah. I, I don't foresee uh, us running into the magnitude of a problem that will trigger sprinklers. But again, erring on the side of caution, we felt this was the best app. Right. Um, yeah. Thank option. you. So just following up on that. So the trip points for ADA compliance and sprinklers, it's, it sounds like it's not necessarily based on the scope. We're putting in a new heating and ventilating system. It, it sounds like it's based on the dollar amount of the project versus, you know, the base value of the building kind of thing or, or some, some more more of a dollar spend kind of thing versus the, the scope of the actual physical things you're replacing. So it's, and, it's and a convoluted process, and it's two separate processes. ADA is triggered when the scope of the work exceeds 30% of the assessed value of the building. Yep. That's ADA. Mm -hmm. The fire side, sprinklers, has a number of factors that have to be considered. And the first one is what if major work is being undertaken. And that is where our troubles have happened over the last three months. There's no definition. In the, in the general law of what major work is. There's two uh, current cases that have been heard and decided that lend guidance to what major work is, uh, but there's no actual definition of major work. And even within those cases, there are words that are not defined uh, that are left to interpretation. Uh, but from everything that I've read and in consult with these fire protection engineers from the state fire marshal, uh, I'm comfortable with the fact that we're not needed to sprinkler this building at this time. Asterix. <laughs> okay. Any other questions or comments related to Article it's 3? Just, yeah, so I have a problem with what we're doing here. It, it's a big piece of free cash that, that we're going to be spending on this versus borrowing uh, to pay for this. Um, I just think if, if the summary boxes could, could use a little bit more information, like how old the building is. You know, this is not a new system. It's an old system. Uh, a, a better breakdown of some of these costs. I, you know, I, I think this, this article by itself with the short summary that's in there is going to get people fired up and, and somebody's playing defense on town meeting floor to sell this. I think if we provide a little bit more background, especially on, on the breakdown of some of these pieces and which ones may be variable or not, may be helpful in better setting this up for uh, uh, town meeting. So, Barbara, can you get us to all those numbers that you have that came out of today's meeting? I, I've, I've got them here. I'll, I'll work with Barbara between us. We'll, we'll craft some stuff and, and bring it back for the, the committee to look at. So is this the heating so, system that was put in in 1987-88? Is that what I, you're talking about? I, it hasn't been replaced? I believe so, yes. That's correct, yeah. And, and I, it, I understand that the, the library director is concerned it's not going to make it through another winter. Uh, they've been really limping it along. They have been, um, yeah. So. So probably they, about five, five or six years ago, um, this project had come forward as we were starting to have issues with the building, um, multiple failures during the, you know, the midst of winter. And... Um, we did a minor repair that was supposed to last, like, two years and we're beyond that so um yeah there as as the chief said i mean at this point the project needs to move forward before we have a, a catastrophic failure and the system is so old that um you know parts and everything else are are an issue 
I think it was a few winters ago, the library in a cold snap closed because the staff, understandably, didn't want to keep working every day in their overcoats. You it was correct. that bad. It was kind of like third world. Mm -hmm. If I could add one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay. So, um, and this is, so one of the issues, and it's not really an issue, but um, the article basically says, you know, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto. Mm -hmm. And so that was, um, it was run by town council and he he felt that it was a reasonable interpretation as far as the scope of the article that it would it could potentially you know include other costs such as the need to sprinkler the building but he also uh, mentioned that um you know in, in order to be abundantly clear we might want to have the motion be a little bit more specific and so i kevin i actually uh emailed it to you just now well probably like 20 minutes ago however it's basically the article as written but then it adds which costs may include but are not limited to the costs of installing building sprinklers as may be required to carry out the project and so if you wanted to add that as the motion of the finance committee then there would be no question that costs um you know, incidental and related there too, may include the sprinkler system. All right, so I have a question just on the, the verbiage you said. So you have, which costs may, but you have a period there. You really meant to have a comma, right? Because, oh no, I see uh, what you're doing. My, I, my phone's it's taking the underline section and extending it so it looks like a period. Sorry, <laughs> it's just my phone doing that weird thing. Yeah, so, I'm, right. I'm sorry. I. Okay. I should have said this earlier. All right. Did you have a question? Yeah, I did. I just wanted to know, <clears throat> excuse me, what the fuel source is for the heat. Is that Currently, correct? it's propane. It is propane. Is it going to remain propane? Uh, uh, Barb, do you know the answer to that? Is it going to remain propane? I, I thought it was. I believe so. Yeah. Th there was talk of another option, um, but that would have required, that would have required a bigger scope of work. So it was, I think it was left. As propane so they couldn't it's a forced hot air system I assume yes so the furnace whether it's gas or oil it's just a furnace change the rest of it's the same the system right the units on the roof are really what what have have failed okay. um, so those are the big cost items yes if they're on the roof they have to be gas All right, just give me a second to type this in because I'm going to make the motion. You can tell I never passed typing. All right. You know, if you use more than one finger, you go a little quicker. I can only use one. Or I type at work. It's like this. There's a name for that, so it's not suitable in public conversation. All right. So you can be specific as to where you're inserting whatever it is. Yeah, that's right. I'm actually going to read it, right? Maybe it's sent it to. So I'm going to make the motion just because I have the language. So to see if the town will vote to transfer from free cash the sum of one million one hundred thousand dollars. For the repair and replacement of the heating, comma, ventilation, and air conditioning system at the Joshua Hyde Library, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, comma, which costs may include, comma, but are not limited to, comma, the list of installing building sprinklers, the costs of installing building sprinklers as may be required to carry out the project. Do I have a second? Um, hang on, Joe. But Kevin, I think that you read the beginning part wrong. I think <laughs> I cut and pasted it right from the other one. Well, what was the first? What was like the first 
five to oh, ten words. Oh damn! I, you know what? I cut it from the thing. You're right. I did read it wrong. So it is that the town will vote. Yeah, that the, the, the town that the will town, transfer from precash. The town vote mm -hmm. to transfer from precash. Yeah. That's the, you're right. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, yeah, cost of installing building sprinklers. Did you want to add uh, another ADA compliant uh, compliance? I think that's already required. So oh. That's yeah, that's an addition to the HVAC. But, but it says you know, but, but but may include, but are not limited to the cost of adding sprinklers. So that kind of will give yeah. the owner's project manager a little flexibility. So just to be clear, is building sprinklers the technical term you would use, or yes, okay. That was written by council. <laughs> there right. you go. So, so let me go back. That's Thirty-four. So it's chaos. Uh, now I missed who the second was. Joe. Joe, that's Joe. right. Okay, thank you. Even though it was wrong. I'm louder. We adjusted. The emotion language. All right, any other questions or comments relating to Article 34? All those in favor? Seven to nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. All right, so let's go back to the beginning. All right, so if you noticed, um, Article 35 is, our, is gone, which was in there last time, so we had to renumber from that point forward. Um, there are a lot of the placeholder articles that were there that are now missing as well. One thing that was interestingly taken off is the, um, you know, the tax relief Yes. Use of free cash for tax relief, which is good because obviously it leaves money for things like we just spent one point, well, we we're asking to spend $1.1 million on. Um, okay, so let's just go back and make sure, you know, this is, a, I'd like to get everything done tonight so the next meeting we're talking about the actual report and people can see and comment and on summary boxes and formatting in the report of the finance committee part that I write about the budget and then whatever other things we can get people to agree to do for issues for your consideration. But just sticking with the ATM warrants for now. So article one is good, voted eight to nothing. Article two, approval is written, voted seven to nothing. Three is community preservation administration funds, approved is written, seven to nothing. Community preservation debt service, article four, Approved as written, eight to nothing. Community preservation gravestone restoration, Article Five is approved as written, voted six to one to zero. Article Six, community preservation town hall storm windows, approved as written, voted seven to nothing. Article Seven, community preservation land survey, Nine River Road, is approved as written, voted seven to nothing. Article Eight, community preservation trail and parking lot construction. So that's approved as written, voted six to one. Article nine, community preservation, town library restoration. Um, that's approved as written, voted seven to nothing. Article 10, community preservation, community wide historic plan. Approved as written, voted six to one. Okay, so here's one we haven't voted, article 11. Now this is the one related to article 32. And Mike had passed out um, actual printed hard copy material last week and he also was kind enough to send out a soft copy this week that everyone should have. So that was the explanation from the town planner related to both of these articles and Mike, I don't know if you want to add anything to it. Uh, we did invite Jean to come but she's uh, unable to attend tonight. So again, in summary, a few years ago the town passed uh, or adopted the Mass General Law to establish a housing trust that didn't put any money in it. But it's adopted Mass General Laws. Uh, that allowed for that trust to be set up and, and operate in accordance with the Mass General Law statute. Follow, and there was also some money set aside for initial housing inventory uh, plan that got put together. So Gene worked with the Housing Partnership Committee that got assembled to kind of take this thing and, and do the initial steps. steps. They're at the point where they've kind of completed that work um, and, and now kind of need to hand this back over to the trustees of the trust uh, and, and someone to take the initiative to move this thing forward. So if, if people um, 
so, so Article 11 is the funding piece. Um, if, you, if you don't pass the article that's coming up, Mass General Law still is still uh, the basis for uh, a bunch of trustees. It generally says the chief executive officer of town can appoint five or more members to be on that. It doesn't specify who. All the powers are, are there. Someone just needs to come forward, have, have the board of selectmen appoint five or more members to get going, and they would use this money uh, to you know, carry forward the plan and, and go forward. The article as proposed, uh, the statute allows towns to kind of adapt their own bylaw versus rely on a mass general law that it basically adopts the same language. And in that bylaw, the powers and responsibilities aren't any different than in the statute, but it establishes a Sturbridge specific set of who the trustees uh, of that are. So it, it named, you know, particular members in there. Um, uh, and and was looking for the selectmen to kind of use that as who the trustees for, for Sturbridge will be rather than five or more people, you know, in, in general kind of thing. So that's that's the intent of, of the article is to kind of make the, the mass general thing specific to Sturbridge and also kind of get some momentum to get, get some members appointed so this can go forward. So we've talked about, well, what if we approve this money and um, the, the, the bylaw that's proposed doesn't pass, well, there's still a means to move forward because we still have adopted the Mass General Law. It still allows for appointment of, of trustees, and it still gives them a mechanism to you know, go forward and start you know, addressing some, some housing issues. Okay. Any further questions for my comments? So is this why in, in Gene's summary, it has the council advised that the bylaw wasn't necessary, so this was who decided that we wanted to have our own bylaw if town council said it wasn't necessary? Is it just to delineate or control the makeup of the trustees? Yes. Is that the primary goal? Because I've read through the whole thing and it, it still wasn't entirely clear to me. But. Uh, I understand so that. The many adopt a bylaw that outlines the responsibility. So just reading from her. From, from the update, it says, town council is advised that a bylaw is not necessary, but many communities do adopt a bylaw. And, and, and the difference with this bylaw, so the, the responsibilities, if I compare those to what the responsibilities are in the statute, they're the same. So it's not like it gives them additional powers that they don't have the statute. It is just the who. It, it's, it, it more specifically establishes the who for Sturbridge versus five, five people at, at random appoint, or five or more appointed by the board of selectmen. So it seeks to have representation from various boards and committees, how, and, and that's, that's how Gene and, and the Housing Partnership Committee and others that are you know, trying to get some momentum in here and trying to address uh, you know, um, uh, some, some housing issues, um, you know, th you know th this is, you know, I want to make sure I use the right, affordable housing. It, it, this isn't uh, low-income housing if you, people think the word's affordable, low whatever housing. else. You know, this, this is smaller homes, different things. This, this enables, you know, young couples coming into town, elderly folks who can't afford the home that need something smaller or a little bit more affordable than the, the, to live out the remaining uh, years here. So to, to be able to, you know, move forward with a plan. Just going back to, I believe it was 2019, the origins of this. Um, unless I'm mistaken, one of the, the part of the impetus to do this was we were deficient in the eyes of the Commonwealth in terms of our efforts to make affordable housing available in this town. And so that was, you know, we're not doing this out of the goodness of our hearts. We're doing this because it had its origins in the fact that we found that we weren't fulfilling our obligation under the, the affordable housing regulations in Massachusetts. And the CPC had an, a ton of extra money just sitting there under that distinction that they weren't spending. And uh, I mean, this committee questioned that several times about why are we doing all this stuff to buy open space, but we're not funding recreation and we're certainly not funding affordable housing. But I believe, I'm just giving a little context to this. And we're, we're not doing this because we, we're, because it's the right thing to do, even though it is the right thing to do. We're doing it because we kind of got behind the curve a little bit on this effort that, as a community. And, and if you're, if you're in, in the planning world, you know, you know, this is 
part of what you're looking for in planning your community? Do we have you know enough housing for the people out here, the people that are coming in? You know, are, are we a community that uh, you know has has a, an appropriate distribution of this? There are state you know standards for you know how much a house is selling for what what's what's a, a apartment for a young person coming into town trying to get a job at a local community uh Sturbridge, like many others kind of says you 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 have some some things that are you know generally unaffordable to to many um you know elderly folks and or you know young people you know trying to get themselves established and move it in, into your community and find a way through some planning mechanisms to come up with how to accommodate that within your community this this isn't you know pop-up tents along main street and small little lots it's it's find a way to um, you know, increase and, and diversify your, your housing stock. Yes, this is something we need to do. We want to control that it's done correctly, yep. the most efficient manner possible, and benefit and benefit the largest segment of the population, as many people as possible. In other words, we don't want to spend five hundred thousand dollars building one one domicile for one family when we could maybe spend the same amount of money to uh, deal with the uh, housing issues of a dozen people. So that's just my two cents worth. Okay. Any further questions or comments? All right, back. All right, then. I will entertain a motion that we approve Article 11 as written. I'll make the motion. Okay. I'll second that. So it's Jim and Mike. Any further questions or comments? All those in, oh wait, go ahead, Lee. You. Who is going to direct the consultant? So that would be. Sorry, I meant to ask yeah, that earlier. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so I think this is intended that somebody will finally appoint some trustees to take this thing and move it forward. So it would be the the the, the, um, the I the trustees um, to to take this and move forward. Uh, Gene would be in there helping them and supporting them from from a planning perspective. There. Yeah. But well, we don't have the trustees yet. Right. I, I think this is right. one of those things that we had discussed in an earlier meeting that we may want to take up Article 32 before we take up Article 11. So because actually, yeah, sorry, I'm interrupting. You. I don't no, that's fine. It's just no, I, I, now that I've read the bylaw, I actually think there's less of a connect between the two of them because if it's not done in accordance with the bylaw, then it's going to be done in accordance with the state the law. general law, and it'll be the new town administrator that appoints. Right. Yeah, the, the bylaw can go down in flames. Uh, and and five people in town can come forward and, and say we, we want to get this thing going and you know come to the board of selectmen and say town did adopt the mass general law you have the, you, the responsibility to, to appoint five or more members here's five of us willing to get involved and make it go we want to get appointed yeah you know, there, there's there's a mechanism if the bylaw doesn't pass yeah you know, that there's still a mechanism for the, for the trust to move forward and as said the trustees to go forward we're just letting the state kind of you know, we're using the state guidance of um, five or more members at random picked by the board as opposed to very specific uh, folks that you know have different set of skills to bring forward and, and support that effort but if the bylaw goes down this article is moot no 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 because we already passed the, we accepted the general law well mike's pointing out we, like, we would just end up pointing five trustees in a different composition than the bylaw yeah, right now the, and they could still use a housing consultant to help them get it off right. the ground yes. okay correct okay then so any other questions comments related to article 11 because i have a first and a second to prove the article is written all right seeing none all those in favor Opposed, so it's six to one to nothing. And this is the, okay. All righty, moving on. Article 12, we voted nine to nothing to approve as written. 13, road construction, voted nine to nothing to approve it as written. 14, public access, voted eight to nothing to approve it as written. 15 is seven to one to approve the article as written. 16, betterment committee. I have seven to nothing to approve it as written. Capital improvement plan, seven to nothing to approve it as written. Article 18, stable, ambulance stabilization fund, seven to nothing to approve it as written. 
capital stabilization seven to one seven to zero to prove that is written fire vehicle stabilization fund seven to nothing to prove that is written OPEB. Can, can I make a comment on article 20 sure my notes indicated and it might have been Mike that made the comment I just scribbled it in that box expected purchase date with a question mark so I had marked up a couple of summary box changes they don't get carried forward to these we're kind of out of sync with who's typing this so I will I, I keep moving forward every version I didn't move them forward to tonight I'm Is after I tonight I'm, correctly yes, about yes. That? I'm okay. going to put those back in there okay. on that one we identify that the five-year capital plan has something in there for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars here's the last time we bought one uh, all that stuff that I we, we or is in a prior draft will we'll get put in here there are some other summary boxes that need a little tuning up so okay so article 21 OPEB I have us approving the article is written seven to nothing 22 evaluation approving the article seven to nothing revolving fund limits approving the article seven to nothing water department article 24 approve the article is seven to nothing sewer department which is 25 is approve the article seven to nothing sewer project debt which is 26 approve is written seven to nothing maintenance on fisk hill and st anne's water tanks so that is 27 approved as written seven to nothing article 28 inflow and infiltration study approved as written seven to nothing module trailer for school bus transportation that is article 29 that was approved as written seven to nothing um, article 30 acceptance of the extension of hillside drive um, that is Approve is written six to zero to one. Article 31, the TIF is approved. The article is written seven to nothing. Oh, I forgot to check if the board has actually moved on from placing things. Um, yeah, oh well, we'll catch up with that later. Article 32, affordable housing trust bylaw. So this is what makes it specific, takes the state bylaw and makes it specific to Sturbridge and basically the composition of the committee. We do not have a vote yet on this article in the selectmen voted to place the article as written in and that's it so I was just pointing out that um, typically that recommendation is is just to place the article uh, that's the language that's used in the petition article and it's the language that's used in in prior uh, warrants so the board of selectmen just put it on the warrant that's all yeah they did. so their vote is not to the place is written it's just to place the article yeah i should well you, you could yeah i could see you can vote it to place the article get rid of as written okay <clears throat> all right so we've had some conversation on this article do i have a motion to approve article 32 is written so moved Hey, Mike. Do I have a second? Larry. Any further questions or comments on Article 32, which is the general bylaw? Seeing none, all those in favor? So that's seven to nothing. All right, moving on. Article 33, purchase of 7 Main Street. Um, we voted 7 to nothing to prove it as written. Transfer of land on Cedar Street. We voted to take no action on that article. 6 to 0 to 1. I have a question on the box on that article. Okay. Are we going to rewrite that box? The summary? Yes. No. That stays like it is? Well, I mean, I, I don't see why. I mean, is there something? Usually we put another box below when we take no action right, well, I, explaining our rationale. I, well, I, okay, if we're going to do that, fine, because this yeah. is like a sales pitch for it. Yeah, I know. I, maybe we have to look at the language because it, this is, it should be neutral. It should it's not, not This is not language. neutral. Yeah, I, I can see that. Practic Town's watershed forever, that is not a neutral statement. Wow. You know, and this parcel was gifted to the inhabitants. We don't know if it was gifted. It's hearsay. Um, quite honestly, uh, that was those were Mary Blanche's words at the meeting when she spoke because she's the dissenting vote on this when they voted uh, so, yeah, not to do this. And Mary basically said when the individual of individuals who gifted this to the town 
they specifically, this is her words, they specifically said this is a gift to the town and they didn't encumber it. They wanted it to be decided by the townspeople. Those were her words. She, that's why she opposed it. And I'm just throwing that out there for what it's worth. Yeah, this, actually, now that I really read the summary box, it really needs to be rewritten all, all in, a, in total. It's because, you're right. It's, it's just a total a sales, sales pitch. pitch. Okay, so we'll strike all of that. I'll change my vote language. after I read this. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Moving on, Article 35, constructing the public parking lot. Um, we voted to approve the Article 5 to 2. So 36, we did tonight, library, HVAC system. It has a very long written motion, voted seven to nothing. Kevin? Yes. So I reached out to Robin, and the HVAC, it's going to be electric. They are switching from propane, which is what it currently is. OK. So it's electric heat and air conditioning. Huh? Oh. Well, taking advantage of the town's credits, I guess. Heat pumps are a lot more efficient than they used to be. Yes. I will. She said that it was off the fossil fuel in line with Massachusetts Green Community. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Um, Article 37, that's the water plant media. And that was, you know, a borrowing language, voted seven to nothing in favor. Sewer department generator, borrowing language, voted six to nothing in favor. Petitioned article, we vote to approve the article as written in that. Um, we'll have to change that language in the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen because it just says to place the article and we just use a different language earlier that, That's on. the language that we've historically used for, for those. Place the article? To place the article, yep. Okay, then we'll have to change that earlier one because I didn't change it to the right thing. So we that was voted six to zero to one. So that seems to finish off the ATM article. Obviously, you see that you know four or five ones we had in that last draft is go are gone. So we, we skipped over them, but there were a couple in there where the selectmen had previously voted just to place that they changed their votes to take some type of action in there. Uh, that's what I mean. The only one I saw was that one that they voted to place the article three to one. Uh, let me. I, I don't know what the selectmen did. They, you know, I didn't watch the meeting, and I assume the people who put this together, you know, referred to their votes. Yep, they did. So I, I can pick them out. Alrighty. So moving on. Now we're going to move on to the special town meeting warrant. Hang on a second. I'll just tell you which articles. Four. Yeah, I took them away. All right. But there were a couple articles towards the end um, where instead of placing them, they voted the other night to uh, take an action on them, and, and th their motion was changed in the version we're looking at to reflect their most recent vote. Oh, you know, if it doesn't say in that version right there that they voted to approve or withhold it, and it still says place, it's just a place. No, there were a couple that were placed that got changed the votes in, in there. Yeah, so. but what I'm saying to you is we're not going to change their vote if that version says. Don't, those are the ones they still placed, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, so. So moving on to the special town meeting warrant, we're actually using the file that's STM June 2020 dash final corrected. Um, the first article in there is article 55, which is betterment payoff dissolving of betterment, which I do not have a vote for. So we need to take that one up. And So this is the one that last time this was from free cash and now it's corrected to say it's coming from yeah, whatever FB stands for in this case. Barbara, can you just give us that? 
It says fund from, balance. Fund balance, okay. Fund balance reserved for sewer betterments. So they corrected where the money was actually coming from. So I would take a motion to approve Article 55 as written. So moved. So that's TM, that's Jim. I'll second. We seconds. I believe some of the article numbers may have changed from an earlier version as well. On this one? On the STM? I know the ATM did. I didn't think there was anything. This is what Barbara sent out today. When I'm... I sent you an email and I said the article numbers were wrong because it didn't take into account the special town meeting in the fall. Oh, Jeez. okay. And it was just caught this afternoon. So sorry. So we'll go through them all and just make sure what the new one. So, yeah, so if you're looking at this one and you're off by a factor of 10 or something, that's, that's because uh, what okay. took place. Thank you for pointing that out, Mike. That's why I looked at the two of them side by side, throw away the old one. All right, so I have a first and a second. By who? The Jim Waddick was the first, Lee was the second. Okay. And it's a motion to approve the article as written. Any other? Oh, Joe? No, sorry. Oh, okay. Any other comments? All those in favor? That's seven to nothing. Let's look at that deed. All right, so the next one would be Article 56, which is snow and ice removal deficit, for which we now have a number. And I, I don't know if it's on the, everyone's form, so I'll just, it's here, so I'll make the motion that the town vote to transfer $142,754. I can add the word dollars in there. And then it's in parentheses as well. From free cash to fund the fiscal year, fiscal 2022 snow and ice deficit. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. So this just gives us a very specific number instead of just a general one. Mm -hmm. So KS, yes. KN, proof is written. Well, actually, no. It's the motion that I have. I think we did the rest. Well, I'm going to walk through it just so it's all codified. 142.754. All right, any other questions or comments? All those in favor? And that's seven to nothing. I mean, who seconded that? I did. Kathy. Yeah. All right. So, unpaid bills of the previous year. We did take no action on this article. Voted seven to nothing because at this point there there weren't any unpaid bills and is that still true, Barbara? Yes. Okay. Article fifty eight transfer of funds to bond account. We, this is three thousand bucks and we voted to approve the article as written seven to nothing. Yeah. Article fifty nine transfer of funds to last call foundation grant. This was proved as written. Voted seven to nothing. So that will get us to the STM warrant. So that, at this point in time, concludes everything we need to vote on. So I don't have my agenda in front of me, so I'm going to guess the next thing is the report of the Finance Committee. And so that's what I'm hoping to get by, like, next Tuesday or so to get it to everyone to read so we can discuss it next Thursday. Okay. And so what I, I, I meant to, but I didn't have time to, is to go out and talk about some of the um, topics that could be as issues for consideration. I don't know if anyone has any that they have a special heartfelt attachment to that they'd like to bring forward to the voters. I'd be willing to to handle that. I just want to go through my notes and see what else I may have or may or may not identified. Does anyone have anything that occurs to them? I know there was a couple of things. So we talked about a cost benefit study of the ambulance service at our meeting on April 7th. That might have been something for the report of the finance committee. Because some towns actually outsource their ambulance service to private companies versus running their own. Webster is an example of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was. Uh, and it doesn't mean they get the revenues, right? You still assess the revenues of the town. You just need to pay an ambulance service a contract rate versus 
others. So I, I, I said, these were for some, doesn't work for for possible consideration. Both. We talked about um, on our meeting on May, April 14th, um, the construction of EV facilities and green power initiatives. So that, you know, the town would provide EV facilities for just EV, it has EV structures here, green power. That's that's what I wrote down. There'll be EV structures going in where the new plant of fitness is being developed. There? There's going to be a whole bank of EV charging stations I, in that parking lot. I thought that was at the old truck stop, the tr next to the truck stop. Where, where these are the plans for the Planet Fitness parking lot that I was looking at. Oh, Had a bank okay. there. Oh, okay. There's only three things approved: Planet Fitness, AutoZone, and the charging stations. That's oh, okay. It's really contracted so far in that complex. Okay. So um, let's see what else they had identified. So on our April 28th meeting, the need for capital stabilization funding and financial policies, you know, to revisit those and kind of codify them and, and update them, especially when it came to the capital capital planning committee and or do that. So that was one possible topic that we also had discussed. Moving forward. This is today. So nope, that's that, that, that was basically the ones that were brought up as possible topics. I don't know if anyone has any interest. I mean, we've kind of been behind the eight ball on these because in for many, many years we had six, seven topics that we would always highlight. In the last few, it's just, you know, because the, pro the process has been very rushed and very haphazard and not very well organized. We, we haven't had time to actually think mm -hmm. about it and put together well-written, informative essays. So, last year it was very brief, as I recall. Red Larry, you wanted to make a call? The last two were really. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, possibly for a, a small essay in the for your consideration section would be um, uh, recommending to the selectmen that they conduct an analysis of the impact of um, uh, ad additional, foreseeably additional, residences and commercial establishments, possibly also manufacturing. The idea being, does the town have an infrastructure to accept that as they come along? There's a tendency to look at something any individual proposal uh, in its own context, sort of by analogy, looking at a hand and the five fingers, but not looking at the arm and the shoulder and all the rest. For example, there is now work underway that will eventually uh, add to the town's housing, housing stock 70 uh, dwellings and uh, as I think uh, I myself maybe others too have mentioned in conversations of this committee along the way that road network alone has to now be plowed when it snows the police have to patrol it and answer calls likewise the fire department has to respond and the schools have to accept uh, children and the particular central point is the instant the building is occupied and no taxes have yet been levied or paid, the town has an affirmative 100% commitment to fulfill the needs, police, fire, plowing, and so forth, at all times. It is instantly in arrears. If the town does its analysis in onesies or twosies, but not l looking uh, at a whole and then deductively and inductively, the whole in its parts, the parts in its whole. Um, couple that with two facts. 
the national police organizations say that right now the list uh, the roster of sworn officers should double and right now in the case of an all hands on deck fire there are not enough people to drive all of the vehicles keep in mind but by statute an ambulance cannot run without two qualified persons in the vehicle because one drives and the other takes care of the patient and when you are already prior to any additional dwellings or commercial establishments which could be more hairdressers uh, more of almost anything that people turn to and expect in a community and right now we're at 50 percent of the police personnel we should have and there aren't enough firefighters and and uh, paramedic uh, emts in an all hands call and i'm just wondering if that might be worth uh, a dozen or so 10 or 12 sentences in a four-year consideration which is addressed to the general public mm -hmm. and a cc in effect to the board of selectmen uh, the uh, the need already outstrips the capacity and if by magic it won't happen but if by magic all 70 of those dwellings i'm not arguing against that project not at all but that alone and we don't make any other changes by way of keeping pace or not falling further behind then we will not be much of an attractive town keep in mind that Burgess pre-k through six is right now among the largest elementary schools in the state the top five or six it changes every year on October 1 and it's uh, still a pretty new building and what's going to happen eat into the playing fields to put on an extension of more classrooms and then those kids can't play on the playing fields because the building's covering them up so uh, I'm not saying that the town has anything but a stellar planning capability I don't know that the general public knows that particularly with respect to the police and fire capabilities not talent just sheer count the noses um, uh, so I'm just suggesting that the committee um, add that topic to the four-year consideration Following your point, it's not just to make the towns aware of the current situation, but to strengthen the message for the need for better long-term considerations. Is that what you're asking? The um, the four, as I understand the four-year consideration essays, they're all to exactly as the head, little subheadline says to the public please consider these matters sometimes the finance committee has resurrected because topics verbatim two three years in a row or takes a year or two off and then brings it right back because the audience within the audience the large audience all the voters all the members uh, the the people voting in the town meetings and within that the five people on the board of selectmen without their nod nothing happens so that's I the idea understand your point what i'm trying to look for is the clarity of the message in the finance report what are we looking well if it's deemed worth a draft then a draft can be drawn up and massaged until it meets the specifications of the committee as a whole as i say 10 or 12 sentences if that 
Is, is your question specific to that or specific to all of these things? I, I, I think if it's in general, you know, we're, we're trying to bring, uh, the purpose is to bring up some items that we uh, from. I'm sorry, yeah, I understand that. I was trying to just make sure I understood Larry's point about the 10 to 12 sentences. What are we trying to get across in that message? Thank you. Oh, did I? Yes. We, okay, fine. Thank you. So are you willing to write that, or do you want someone to I thought you'd someone? never ask. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be good to have something. I'd like to restart that tradition of putting things that we find through this budget process that, you know, either aren't being addressed at all for whatever reasons, you know, that voters should be aware of, because I, I think you're right in some sense here. I mean, there's a lot of impact. Yeah, I was, some of the other things I was thinking of when you talked about, you know, schools, fire, police, water, sewer, well, now you got, especially if it's industrial and commercial, now you have additional inspections. So, you know, you have different That's right. And then inspections. you begin to wonder whether it's good to have a uniform or a split tax rate. Things get connected to things. We, we've definitely been down that split tax rate before. I know. And we, we could bring that up again, but that's, you know, what was that? I think I mentioned in the last meeting, it was like 2005 to 2012, we experimented with that. Yes. But Kevin, I agree with your sentiments about we have a little bit of time this time. I think that the value of this committee is in how it structures the report as well. So yeah. I agree with your sentiment completely. All right, any, anybody else have anything you're passionate about? I just have a comment, and this has come up with Barbara, that sometime after the town meeting is over and we can draw our breath and before we have to dive back into it and he have a special town meeting maybe in the fall that maybe in late summer and Barbara I hope you're still there we can get together and get together with Barbara and whatever maybe the new town administrator and whoever and do just you know kick the can around and see what are we missing that we should be addressing and well one, one of the things we used to put out too at the end of the budget process in addition to the issues for consideration that actually went in our book and went to the voters, we used to put out our, I think it was called Memorandum of Findings, yeah. Yeah. which were basically things that we thought the town was coming up short with, that the Board of Selectmen should be aware of and should take action upon. Mm -hmm. And we used to transmit that to the town administrator and the Board of Selectmen, and I'm sure it made the circular file more than once, mm -hmm. but um, that was another project we used to take up. Mm -hmm. I think we have to talk to people in, who are involved with the town who live it every day. Right. More than people who meet once a week or once every other week. Or, so, for what it's worth, that's my opinion. Okay. Yeah, but I have an interest in the ambulance service topic, but I don't know that I have the bandwidth to write up anything worthwhile by the time you would you get know, it for e the Even if you were to write something wrong, I mean, we, we're going to all massage it. We'll look at it and make comments. Any, you know, if, we, if it's not ready, we'll just say it's not ready. We've had that happen before right, well, where people put in a lot of effort and we have to say, no, I'm sorry, it's just not ready. Yeah, work schedule between now and our next meeting is pretty tight. That's yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll see what I can do then. So Great. you can just Thank say, you. yeah, it sucks, and let it go. <laughs> Well, I can tell you that right now. Well, I hope it's better than that, <laughs> yeah. then. You set the standard high. He'll use kinder, gentler words than yeah, that. Yeah, I probably should have, too. I have better words than that. Sorry. Okay. Um, all right. So, and I've got to try and write that front section. So I'll try and do that. So that's the report of the Finance Committee. Next would be meeting minutes. And we have a set of meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. From April 28th. Okay, so I sort of, so I'm working off of the set that Alyssa sent out. I know Larry asked uh, that we um, take out the reference to who do who do not have set terms uh, on the back page there. So I'll I'll, I'll make sure we we strike that in the final set. Right, thank you. And I found a couple of things that I think should be corrected, so if I can speak. Yeah, go for it. Under, uh, at the top of the second page, under Article 6, the last sentence, it says, the energy efficient of the windows, I believe that should say energy efficiency 
of the windows. And then if you go down to Article 7, the third sentence, it said, this would necessitate funding for survey work. I think you got to drop the D. This would necessitate funding. Um, and uh, page three. Page three, and this may not pertain, but I, I was reading a quote from RR, Mr. Reed. It mm -hmm. says, RR agreed, adding that the Sturbridge that Sturbridge is in the enviable position financially, but it, but it says, but that the town desperately needs a long-term capital plan. And that may be okay, and I don't know, but I would have written, I would put, but in his opinion, the town desperately needs, because if you're gonna say it desperately needs it, then that begs, if, wow. who's desperately means that's his opinion. I mean, I don't know, does anyone disagree with that? No, it's, I agree. So where, where is that one? That one is in uh, oh, yeah, page see four, one. right? Uh, third paragraph up. In the bottom, yeah. The town desperately needs a long term, so I put in his opinion, desperately needs. Okay, you could just put that, but the town needs, that would work as well, yeah. Yeah, and I, I But he did use that word, I know he did. And, and then, I thought part of the discussion was we have a five-year capital plan. He's just kind of coming up with a different structure for it. So it's not like we don't have one. No, we have a mechanism in place. Um, and then the only other thing I have was on the top of where it says Article 18. And just so everyone knows, I had this conversation with Mike because we were debating numbers. It mm -hmm. says rolling discussions. Well, if you go to the second sentence, it says, MH clarified that the ambulance will cost 598000 It's not. The ambulance will cost 375000 223000 of the three seventy-five is coming out of the ambulance stabilization fund, and 152000 is in that fund. So it's not 578. 598, yeah. Not 598. It should say, clarify, the ambulance will cost 375000 With 223 um, coming. With 223000 coming from the, of that amount, coming from the ambulance stabilization account. So. Thank you. Any idea where I got that figure? It was very confusing the night we talked about it. That's why I read this and I said, I remember that, but that's not what it is. Thank you. Okay. And that's all I found. Otherwise. I thought I found something where you used the same word twice in a row, but I can't find it. You, know, you just type the, oh, the same word twice, but if you can. But when I make these changes, I'll kind of look, look forward, forward flags to double words. I about highlighted it, but it's not. Okay. First, it popped that out at me then, but not now. not change any meaning of anything, so. All right, then. So do I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So move. Okay. I have a second? Second. Uh, no, Kathy. All right. So Jim and Kathy. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I abstain since I wasn't present. Okay. Six to zero to one. Hang on a second. Um, actually, you know, I hate to do this at this, to this stage. Um, there was an article, Article 5, where we voted 610, but we didn't. Do we typically note who of those who either are opposed or abstain who they are? Yes. Note those in here? Yeah. Because the, the only reason why is they can't bring up a motion reconsider. to reconsider. You have to be in the majority. Okay. So I'll, I'll add those in here as well. Prevailing side. Yeah, prevailing side, yeah. Um, I'm trying to find the note. So now we move into old business, new business. This one kind of 
covers both of those lines. I don't know where I put it, but um, we there has been a, I guess I'm going to say re-invitation extended to attend a charter review committee meeting that will be held at night. And I'm trying to find the, the I think it came from the secretary from the Board of Selectmen. Is it next Tuesday? That's what I'm trying to find, Larry. Do you know? Um, I think I do. Seventeenth. And I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. I'm looking for it, but I haven't found it yet. Does that mean the other one that was scheduled never happened? Oh, it did. But it happened. We we went. Yeah, this is the second one. We went, and there was five of us in the audience, and Larry was here, but he was acting as a member of the charter review committee, and then. Um, but I, the point was made that because the meeting was at 4 p.m. in the afternoon, a lot of people who were interested in attending couldn't. Okay. Even though all of us had sacrificed to be there, so. But yes, there is. It's uh, 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, May 17, here. Okay. That's what I thought. So I, I already have a prior engagement that evening, so I can't attend, but I had made my comments to the committee that afternoon at 4 p.m. I would assume that really this is intended for members of the Board of Selectmen who weren't there at 4 p.m. in the afternoon so that they could be heard. But I don't know if anyone has an interest in going on our behalf or, or at least listening in, but I just wanted to make sure you were aware that we were extended a second invitation to come back and either add additional comments or just listen to those that were made that evening. So, Larry, that was May 17th at 6.30 here in the Chambers? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, so Try to make that. Is that going to be year. televised, do you know? I have no idea. The, the last charter review we were, okay. it was not. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I'm going to check and see if the last one was at least recorded. No, it wasn't. Oh, it wasn't. Okay. Yeah, there was nobody here doing any of that work the last time we were here. I don't rewatch the ones I attend usually. So. Um, <laughs> all right, so anyone else with any old business? So anyone with new business? Anything they can think of? So I guess I just wanted, I should have said this when there, when, when there were people in the audience were here, but to personally thank everyone for all their time and energy and all the department heads, especially Barbara, for all yes. the time and energy she puts in and everyone who's answered yeah. all of our various questions, you know, at least you're helping us get to the point where we're at now. So thank you. And we're back here next week. We're back here next week. Yeah. Hope, you know, if there's some emergency vote we have to take, yeah. we can reconsider and vote. But the idea is really to finalize the content of the report of the Finance Committee and then for me to get it to a printer so I know the number of pages and all that type of stuff. So the 26th is out because it'll be too late to get anything. Right. I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping by, let's see, that this guy, the person I went to last year, I haven't called him yet, I need to do that. He had it turned around in, in like three business days. And if he can turn it around in three business days again, we can have it here with that goal of two weeks or close to two weeks prior to the annual town meeting mm -hmm. of having it yeah. in people's hands in a printed copy. Obviously, an electronic copy shows up on the town's website, but. You know, the printed copy, a lot of people like to come and pick up and read and peruse. And so that, that's my goal. All right. Do you need help with anything? The text boxes, I think, all that stuff? Or so I'm going to doing go, to go with Mike on that one. Mike's been doing an unbelievably admirable job at keeping up and writing these things and transferring things from version to version to version to version. So, I mean, any assistance you may need, now's the time to ask. If you just want a second set of eyes at the end to proofread. Yeah, so I think, I'm, I think I'm good. Uh, you know, there's still some summary boxes. I need some stuff from Barbara. I'll, I'll get together with her in the next couple of days and add them in there. And then I, I can send that version out. Then, yeah, if someone wants to take another set and look for the periods and the commas and a few other little things, I'm happy to, to do that. But I'll, because I'll, I'll send out a marked up version versus tonight to reflect any changes from the, the corrected piece to 
Okay, and feel free to send all comments to Mike. I mean, I don't, and so Larry, I'm gonna ask you this, because in my mind, this does not constitute debate, because we're not actually discussing articles we're gonna be voting on. It's just the content and the aesthetic appearance of how things look. So we can feel free to exchange comments with Mike yep. about, about adjusting words and for me yeah. You're right. Situation and grammar. There, and there, there's no deliberation. Right. Yeah, someone wants to suggest some edits just back to whatever without back and forth on email. You know, I can incorporate those okay, so and resend them. We'll work with that point, okay? All right, then. If there's nothing else. Oh, wait, Public it's our access, access yes. yes. As usual, you know, we had that roaring crowd here at the we beginning. We did, that was amazing. <laughs> and, and then that was that. Okay, so no public access. So now I will guess I will take a motion for adjournment. What, that is Jim, and do I have a second? Lee's lost his space. Okay, Lee, please come back. I'm here. Okay, so I have a first and second for adjourn adjournment. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor? So that's seven to nothing at 905.